Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to export fully completed facial expressions from Maya to Character Creator 4. The great thing about this process is that you can skip using additional software like ZBrush or Blender to manually sculpt features such as an eye blink. Let's dive in. If you'd like to follow along, start by going to the website cgtrader.com. Here, you'll find a free model created by 3D Cartoon. I'll leave the link in the description for easy access. You'll notice the model is available in both FBX format and Maya format. To get started, click on free download and wait for the file to be ready. Once it's ready, download both formats. Make sure to save the files in a folder where you can easily find them. Since the files are compressed, we'll need to extract them. Uh, I prefer using WinRAR for this. Here's how. First, select all the downloaded files. Then, right-click, go to WinRAR, and choose Extract Here. Now that we have extracted the Maya and FBX files, we can work with them. So, let's open Character Creator 4 to get started. Here, we just close this and then click on Create Character. And from the folder where you saved and extracted the files, select and open the FBX file. Now I'm gonna choose Humanoid and then click on Apply. Here at the top, you will find these keyboard shortcuts to change the view. You can see here that the rig created in Maya has been preserved. To view the bone names, simply go to Window and select Bone Manager. As you select any bone, it will highlight the corresponding one in the Bone Manager. Now we will do the characterization of the model. Here, it says we must change to a T-Pose, but I won't do that just yet to avoid issues when importing expressions from Maya. And if you want to speed things up, click here to enable auto-assign symmetrical bones. This will apply the bones assignment to both sides at once. I won't enable it now so I can show you the entire process. We will now assign just the main bones. Don't worry if the model has more bones than shown in this chart. When you left click once, it will be highlighted. In order to assign it to a bone, we need to double left click and it will turn red. Let me just zoom in a little bit. Then, we left click once on the corresponding bone, in our case, the rib. If you click on another part to deselect it, you will notice that the rib changes color. This means the selected bone has been assigned. Let's repeat the same process for the next bone. Double click, and then click once. I'll click here just to show you it also changed color. If, for any reason, you want to unassign a bone, just right click once and it will be unassigned. Let me reassign it and we'll repeat the process for the other bones. Here, be careful not to confuse the model's skirt with its leg bones. Here, I want to assign this bone to this one and the toe end bone to this one here. You'll notice that when I hover the mouse over them, their names don't appear. That's because I first need to assign this main bone to any other just to enable the toe bones. So I double left click here to assign it, and then click here just to show you that it's assigned. Now when we hover the mouse over them, the names show up and we can assign them. I'll start with the toe end bone by selecting it and assigning it here and then do the same for this other one. This message appeared because it's already assigned to this one here, and it's asking if we want to clear the assignment. We just hit OK, because that's exactly what we want. By doing so, it reassigns the bone to the correct one. Now let's just click here to return. Click on this arrow to open the spinal section. And let's start assigning them from the bottom up. And let's hit return and click here to assign the neck bone. We select the first one from the bottom. Since this model has only one neck bone, we're done in this section. Now just click here to return and assign the head 
and arm bones. And let's click this arrow to open the hand section. Here's a tip. We don't need to go one by one. To speed up the process, we just enable auto assign child fingers by clicking here. And when we select the main finger bone and assign it to the corresponding finger, it automatically selects all the bones. And just repeat the same process for the other fingers. Let's now do the model's right side. Now, you will notice that when we assign this bone here, this red circle turns green, allowing us to activate the characterization process. Even though we haven't assigned all the bones, this is because we've assigned the main required bones. But before we click active, let's assign the right hand bones. And after finishing the entire characterization process, we can now click active and proceed to the next step. Now that it's active, let's go ahead and click here to exit the characterization. Next, I'll fix this material by clicking on the material tab. I'll select the first PBR material, hold shift and click on the last one to select them all. Then I'll scroll down to strength and move the slider to 100. You'll notice an immediate improvement in the material. After that, let's go to the Motion Pose tab and open the Facial Profile Editor. Here, we'll click on Edit Expressions, where you'll see all the available controls, such as Eye Look. This option is currently disabled because we haven't created any expressions yet to start importing the preset expressions from Maya. We first need to go to File, Export, OBJ, then click Keep Facial Expressions in Nude Bind Pose. Leave the settings as they are, Axis, Y Up, and Part Full Body, then click Export. Just give the file a name, since I've already done this, I'll simply replace the existing one. Once the export is complete, you'll have two files. The OBJ file, which contains the character model, and the OBJ key file, which stores the character's bone position data, which will be necessary when importing into Maya. In Maya, go to Open Scene, then navigate to the folder where we downloaded the model. Select and open Cartoon Girl Rig.mb, and when prompted, click Don't Save. First, let's adjust the scene for better visualization. Enable textures by clicking this icon on the top bar, then click on the light bulb icon. To add a light, go to Create, Lights, and select Directional Light. In the Attribute Editor, I'll adjust the intensity until it looks good to me. Next, select the face, click here on Front, and you'll see the facial control panel where you can manipulate different facial parts. Let's close the left eye to do an eye blink. Select the left upper eyelid and on the left panel, you'll find control tools. Hover over each one to see their keyboard shortcuts, W for move, E for rotate, and R for scale. For this, we only need the move tool. With the move tool active, click on the channel box tab in the top right corner. Moving the Y axis closes the left eye, or you can simply type one to close it completely. Now to export this expression, go to File, Export All, then navigate to the folder where we exported the OBJ file from CC4. To keep things organized, I'll name it the same as in Character Creator 4. Click on iBlink, name it iBlink L, 
and under File Type, make sure it is selected OBJ, then click Export All. Back in Character Creator 4, find iBlink L, and click on this little edit icon. Click here, and select the iBlink L OBJ file, and open it. After, open the OBJ key file from the same folder, click OK, and now the iBlink is imported. Let's zoom in a little. Click here or press J on your keyboard. So now the slider is active, letting us open and close the eye. However, there's an issue as you can see here. While we close and open the eye, the model's position changes. It is happening because the model preserved its positions from Maya along with the expression exported, and that's why I didn't set a T-pose earlier. But I'll change to a T-pose after exporting all expressions that I need for this tutorial. Luckily, I've already found a solution by adjusting the model's position in Maya little by little until it aligns correctly in CC4. Back in Maya, scroll down and select this blue circle. Press W to enable the Move tool, then in the channel box, Set, Translate Y to 0.03, Translate Z to 2.51. I will leave these parameters in the description. Press Enter after each adjustment. Now export the file again, selecting the same file, and clicking Yes to replace it. Back in Character Creator 4, repeat the import process, open the iBlink OBJ file, then the OBJ key file, and hit OK. This time, when we open and close the eye, the model stays in place. Before moving on, let's zoom in on her face. Now, I'll do the same for the right eye. Switching back to Maya, always remember to reset any previous adjustments before moving forward. I'll make the right eye blink following the same process. Select the right eyelid controller, set its value to 1, Then go to File, Export All. This time, I'll change L to R in the name, since it's the right eye. Back in CC4, open the newly exported OBJ file, then the OBJ key file, which we will always use the same file. And that's it for the right eye. Now let's do the same for Jaw Open. You don't have to rename it, but to stay organized, I'll match the name used in CC4, calling it Jaw Open. And that's it. You can continue doing it, but once you're done, you can exit the edit expressions. Now we need to change the model from A pose to T pose. In the motion pose tab, click here to set a T pose. I'll adjust the shoulder and upper arm bones to match a T pose. Once I'm satisfied with it, I'll click here to save and exit. To test the T pose, go to motion, Pose and click on these options to check if the model moves correctly. You can also test the facial rig by applying the full face test. This is a previous version where I exported as many expressions as possible from Maya. You can always refine and improve your workflow. And that's it guys, if you found this helpful, please give it a thumbs up so I know if I keep creating more content like this. Also, let me know if you know a better way to do it. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.